that we want to know how are you settling down since you have one? The second down is going on very, very well. Uh, because uh, what, what I find interesting about this environment is the is the huge potentials, you know, of both the staff and students of this university. There, there are lots of potentials in this university. And what we did as soon as we came in was to do our stakeholders mapping. We began by identifying our critical stakeholders. And these are the people we have been engaging all the time after our stakeholders meeting. We looked at our internal people, you know, like the professors. We engaged all the professors. Um, we set up WhatsApp group for them so we can share ideas with them. We engaged all the heads of departments and the deans of the faculties and of the directors of various units. We engaged the postgraduate students. We engaged both the um, registry, the, the, the deputy directors the works department, the uh, department, all these people are our internal stakeholders. So it's been an engagement, engagement, engagement. We took ourselves to Abuja too, to see our critical stakeholders in Abuja. The members of the House of Representatives, the Senators, uh, the MUC, uh, the Tech Fund, um, the Minister of uh, Federal Minister of uh, Education, and uh, the Anambra in Abuja. We had a whole lot of engagement, and the message is actually clear. We are available for partnerships. We are available for you to invest in our university. We are providing a marvelous background for you to be able to come to our university and then um, partner with us in the whole process. The engagement is still on because I mean, throughout the um, <laughs> throughout the Christmas period, we are going around, you know, talking to the. Uh, the the big fish in the in Anambra State, you know, engaging them. I mean, it's surprising. Many of them didn't even know that this university existed, honestly. They were very surprised. They were asked, Why is this university? Why, you know, um, they only hear about Tunisia. I said, No, part of what we have come up and what we are doing is to begin to make sure that uh, uh, this university becomes visible. So, after engaging all these people, we came up with three, you know, um, kind of vision that will guide us, you know, visibility, viability, and value driven. You know, so we are looking at how we can make our university visible, how we can make our university viable, how we can run this university, you know, with you know values that are very positive in the university of the world. So yes, we're saying that we've, we've had a whole lot. I mean, let me tell you, this is exactly two months that I assumed office. Yesterday, fifth, it was exactly two months that I assumed office. As the, as the, as the, we took over in uh, December, on December 5th, and uh, I mean, today is sixth. So it's exactly two, uh, two, two months in office. And uh, one would even think that we're already six months or more, because uh, we are making a whole lot of um, disruptions here and there, and uh, getting our feet squarely into what it is to be a vice chancellor in a, a university, a thriving university like this one. Uh, so one of the positive things we've done really is to begin to change the psyche of people who are in this university. It's not longer business as usual. We have set out clearly what you want to do. You must convert values. I told them. I do not want anybody to exploit my students very clearly, you know. So we have set a whole lot of things in motion. We have set up committees. When, I, when we came in, I mean, so we have set up the committee uh, to do a five-year development plan, strategic plan for this university. We also have said that our 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 uh, master plan is not yet concluded here and there. So we are also setting up. A, a committee working with the DPP and the Mike, we call what the architect, you know, to make sure we come to conclusion about our master plan. And I mean, uh, we are, we also we also set up a committee on land issues. But one of the greatest challenges we have in this university is that most of the land you see here, you know, you know, that in combat. Really, really. So when people talk about that, what are they doing? Are people in agriculture? Most of them are like, you know, they're very, very 
Well, some or sometimes the, the villagers come in here. You have to contend with the land, the people. You have to contend with the environment people. You have to contend with the state class. Is I've written to Commissioner for Lands, you know, telling him about this challenge. I've written to the. In fact, tomorrow we are going on the coasting call to the uh, Anambra. You know, we are expecting coasting call. If they don't come, I'll go to them you know, to see the people of uh, this Nando uh, um, and the people of uh, and the people of uh, Maria. So, because we need to talk. If you see all the palm trees here, I mean, I look at it, I practically cry because I say this is pure low hanging fruit for us. Yes. But I understand that the villagers will come in. Um, have they come with one or sixteen young men? And advise them, you know, without the, they come with every manner of uh, gun and whatever to just make sure they take it. So it's it's frustrating for us as a university. And I told myself, I'm not just going to sit here and watch them do that. We need to find a way to, you know, to arbitrate, to talk with them, to see what we can do. If you look around, you see that the fence, the, the fence of our university are all they're falling down. So it gives room for Fulani headsmen, every man or person to, to come in. And, and this, is, this is something that has not occurred well for this uh, um, university. A whole of vandalization going on here and there. If you look at the gate there, you see where they, they started being a, a mini kind of uh, power station. The whole thing was vandalized. The pond that, uh, fish pond that we started uh, with the past, uh, with the past uh, vice chancellor, what up to 40 million? One day, I don't know how Gamalin or whatever they, uh, somebody put it there, and the whole fish died. You see? So it's quite frustrating because this is a university that has a lot of, you know, that has a lot of potentials. Mm -hmm. And we are not harvesting them because of all these challenges here and there. We we'll call on the state government actually to come to the end, to find our land, you know, complete offensive for us. If, if you look at the other side of the road, it's our, it's our land too. Mm -hmm. but. Nothing is happening there. There's a cross. Nothing there. As well, practically, <laughs> when they were talking to the, some of the lecturers, they live, practically live in fear. They won't be able to you know, go there to farm because you know, challenge, this is one of the you know, greatest challenges we have found out here. Uh, but I'm, I know I know that Mr. Governor and the Minister of Lands will come to our aid and get this sorted out so that we can match on as a university. Thank you. <laughs> because I was going to ask the bishop, yeah. you know, your bishop of the university, mm -hmm. but you talked about disability, values, and values, and values, new values from, <laughs> from way back. Yeah. You know. mm -hmm. uh, so now, Adia, you, you, you went into quite a number of things. Adia, immediate short terms, you know, uh, things that, quick fixes that you yeah. what you want to deal with, yeah. you know, immediately in the short term. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. we have a whole lot of uh, uh, quick and back up. We've already started, uh, you know, um, laying the bed for that, laying the bed for that. Um, one of them is uh, beautification of the um, university entrance. We have actually redesigned our entrance. Uh, we have we also in, in talk with uh, uh, horticulturists who, who will you know uh, help us and maintain and plant grass in front of the in front of the university gate. We are remodeling the gates, you know, because I mean we want to give this university a semblance of a, of, of an academic environment that will be serene, that will be welcoming. And uh, most importantly, that uh, you know, people will be glad that they are uh, they have something to do with us. Uh, so that's one of the things we are we are doing. Uh, we are going to say the next six months. This is the next four months because we can give ourselves a six months target. You you come here and not recognize the interest of this university. That is something we must have to do. That's one. Another thing we are seriously thinking about is uh, how we can. You know, uh, lift the face of of this cement house. Uh, you know, uh, we started removing some of the unwanted things in the in the um, in the in the downstairs there, where there is a waiting room. Uh, within the next four months, I hope we would have completed, you know, giving a good facelift to that place. 
and you see the other things we have introduced because of the public relations we need is uh, this part we are now you know it's part of what we are trying to do to, to package our university as a university that is not just responsible but responsive you see so um to make people understand i mean when you go to some other places i mean if i travel to abuja and come back i, I come back i say oh wow i don't understand we need to get this thing right so by the time you come the next four months where it's a six months plan in the next four months you will see a different outlook definitely at the reception and we are making an effort to you know give a first lift to to, uh, to the select house which is the administrative headquarters of this university totally attacking every kind of my practice academic crime and i say this with every sense of responsibility we have set up uh, communication channels they can report any case of abuse any case of um uh, 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 how would i put it any case of academic fraud any any time that they are uh, they don't feel happy about something and uh, the one we're here actually is because of the students the students are not here and um, we'll be here so one of the quick ways we are doing is that uh, i'm sorry for the scapegoat that we're going to use to actually show that we're very serious about this things you know to make sure that people know that they are here to teach and uh, uh, going in the next six months in the next four months we are also setting up a research management office you know and one of the quick ways which we are doing is that working with the quality assurance team we are setting up a prize for those who are publishing well you know recognized journals already i have the list of these people already before me now the quality assurance team i want to say kudos to them they have found out and we've done a lot of google scholar sites of us of our uh, staff in this university and i must excitedly tell you that i mean the staff of that honestly many of them are visible on google but this is this is something we have not actually tapped into we are redesigning our website you know redesigning our website so that it will look more welcoming and uh, uh, one of the things we have also decided to do is to do full automation full automation of everything we are doing we are starting with full automation for all our um, our money coming in but well, that's way to, the way to plug linkages so that's also something we are doing it's a quick way for us because we already have uh, um, an ICT team that has been working with university over the years. So we've had meetings with them and we've told them how we want to do full automation. And uh, that will help us improve on our entire general tech that will be, you know, um, basically that's what some of the quick ways that you can see to do. Thank you, Mark. That uh, reminded me of something I saw. Mm -hmm. And it has to do with face lifting, face lifting, ambience, and the rest of them. Incidentally, these are things mm -hmm. some of us, particularly in this climate, we take for granted. You know, but we are seeing universities like Nsuka, Lagos, Ife. Mm -hmm. Ambience is the first thing that yeah. grips you mm -hmm. when you go there. Mm -hmm. And I recall some time ago, I was traveling through this route, you know, many years back. I saw the Chukwemi God Some of the letters mm -hmm. we, are, we are falling off. Mm -hmm. I was saying, didn't somebody notice this? Because this is the face yeah, of the yeah, university. Yeah. So, anyway, I'm not surprised that we need to look at those things. Give me your PR yeah, background. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Now, let's shift our conversation to something else. Uh, you are a foremost professor of mass communication in this country, and you co authored a book, uh, or is it a journal? Uh, that, that, that you, yeah, a book that you titled uh, New Media and African Society. Society. You know, even though I've not read the content, but I mean, the title bespeaks the content as it, as it were. Now, my question is do you think new media can effectively, you know, enough penetrate the traditional African, you know, uh, society, given our level of literacy and technological advancement, it's uh, it's practically everywhere. 
even that around my 71 year old auntie who uh, we, we gave her a, a food, you know, um, and just food. And I was surprised. And she, this woman didn't drink food from my sis. And I was surprised she was uh, always posting something for us on the, on the, uh, on the WhatsApp. And that was how his brother, who was her brother, who was coming back, sent her a message that she was coming back. And she was able to do this. She was able to do that. I mean, it's, it's, already, it's already happening. You know, even the, the because of course the the of the handy nature of say telephones and stuff, people can easily use that and move to anywhere the the, the move. So I, I I believe yeah, within our African context, in any form you want to think of it, um, of course because of some of the pictures you see, even if you can read, sometimes you see pictures, you see a whole lot of things. So it's a uh, it's uh, that group was actually uh, tracing the trajectory of African African media. You know, traditional media and to that that evolution that kept on going till you know we are here in the with the new media and how that has impacted a whole lot of things we do in the society everywhere. Just like when we had our uh, inaugural lecture. I mean by the way I was had our first inaugural lecture uh, which is a night for this university. It's at this man very low but at twenty three or twenty four year old university is only doing uh, the eighth it was only doing the ninth inaugural lecture. Yeah, we have another one fixed for this um, month, so we have another one for next month. So we already have like six lined up. So within six months in office, we should have done six inaugural lectures. Yeah. You know, and this is if you compare with that two to three years old of eight inaugural lectures, you will see how fast we are running. You know, to to get this done. So I was talking about that. We had to um, uh, get the services of uh, uh, media, you know, media people. To actually make us visible online when we are doing the inaugural lecture, and I was surprised that people far away and people right there in my village that you know were they were able to see us when we are when we are doing that, and when we shared our trailer on there, I felt they could see that, and these are people in the village. People wouldn't even know that uh, if not, they will see your pictures and see how you were going and see a whole lot of things. Yes, it's um, it's actually a trend. That has come to permeate many African societies, even the very remote. And, and let me tell you, many of our people, um, I mean, research has shown that, you know, uh, just like radio has become, uh, you know, uh, it's ubiquitous, uh, almost practically everywhere, this three media is also getting to that place, transcending every kind of uh, um, breaking barriers yeah. and making sure that people see what is happening. Okay. Okay. Is it, is it part of. Um your when it comes to curriculum now, is it part of what you will the, the trajectory of what you want them to focus? Yeah, part of part of what we have, we can push hybrid teaching okay. and learning, especially for um, Uli campus, where we know that we have huge challenge, security. you know, security wise, you know. So we are thinking of how we can teach students so that they don't lose so much because sometimes they don't even go to classes. Sometimes, uh, uh, yeah, each time, well, like I wanted to visit to the last week and I was told that someone was scared in front of the gate. I had to, I had to run, run back. I said, no, I'll have to wait. So, one of the ways we are trying to see how we can bridge the security challenges and not leave our students without so this hybrid, hybrid teaching. Uh, so that's what we are planning. Um, I'm hoping that uh, by next the next session that will take place effectively. Thank you. Uh, I recall that when you were commissioner for basic education, there was uh, this ten shared Share values you know, that you were so passionate about. Mm. As a matter of fact, I'm sure if I <laughs> if I let you go now, you will recite the ten. I will. <laughs> you will recite. It. You are so passionate yeah. about mm. the ten shared values. Mm. And um, I want to ask, how effective has this been in the molding of characters of your students and pupils at that time? And can this be replicated among the young adults you have in the in the university? And then uh, finally, can uh, it ultimately impact positively in the interpersonal relationship of the future generation? Mm -hmm. Go to Mr. Governor's uh, manifesto. You will see where he, he clearly talked about the shared values. 
clearly talked about how that will will permeate our every fiber of our society. And yes, one of the things we'll do when we put on um, the fountain that we want to put on within the university is to have clearly a place where we we'll place the shared values. Yes, that's part of our dream. Put it there because I mean, to me, it's like commandments. And when you when you do that naturally, to make a positive impact on everyone I meet and everywhere I go, to be a solution provider and not a part of the problem to be solved, to be a role model, to be my best in all I do, particularly things I'm not really good at, to do the right thing at all times, regardless of who's doing the wrong thing, to value time and make the message of it, to care and show respect through my words and actions, to cautiously build a great legacy, starting now, today, and every day, to live a life of integrity and honor, and to make my family, my state, my nation, and my God. So help me, God. Mm-hmm. You know, education is about ideology. Mm-hmm. It's what you believe in, what you profess. What you, you see? So, for me, this is also part of what you've been driving in this university. You know, we're also setting up what we call the students' police. We are going to help us with our environment. You know, I've told the dean of student affairs to begin together with students who are, who are going to police the environment. So we have we must have put in some um, well being and all those things. We will we'll make sure that anybody who violates um, the cleanliness of the environment will be caught. If a student, you can ask the person to go and cut grass, and they are not they are not or. Or send the, or send the person wants to go. Would you ask you to do some community work? Mm-hmm. We can ask you to come and clean the office. Do something because community policing, student policing, is actually something that is very crucial for us, which we are also going to do. So, and that will mean you know making sure that we have law and, and order squarely in place, in line with the mission and vision of uh, our uh, Mr. Governor, Professor Charles Tumasilude. So that's a, that is actually an area that is also dear to the heart of, of this administration, which, in the, uh, as the time unfolds, we will be able to drive them. You know, has actually been a soft point for most universities, not just the uh, Chukwuemeka University, but most universities in Nigeria. Mm-hmm. And that's the issue of politics. Mm-hmm. Politics. Do, do you have? You know, it may be improper to begin to disclose some strategy here, but do you have an approach, a deliberate, intentional approach, how to deal with Because uh, it is a campus menace yeah. that uh, every university yeah. suffers. Almost zero content. Yes. Yeah. What, what is actually what is actually involved in this Yahoo Yahoo people, uh, which they do, and part of what we are going to do is um, uh, these values we are going to drive. That's one. Um, secondly, is that try to clean up the system as much as we can. If if two people if students uh, are taught well. If students are assessed well, if students are given some punitive kind of um, treatment when they do wrong, when lecturers do not allow students who are who are absent from from their classes to just take the exams and do one uh, abracadabra and get them and pass them, I mean students will be the, the time we have that we are, we, the the poor people have not provided good role model for the students. And if you get those ones right, I think those are who who solve will lessen. Because from my own observation what we have one interaction, courses is almost there up here. But you have a whole lot of people who are doing one kind of like who's still here and there. As the VC, can you still yeah active level the council? Uh, yes, of course, because uh, you know you you have you have made your mark there, and because of who you are, that was why we left everything we are doing to go to Abuja to make sure that we become a council member. And um, I am ready to. I was just discussing with Professor Adil member, and because you talked a lot, and I'm sure my governor will want to hear that. You talked a lot about NIPR partnering with. 
with uh, government and uh, all that so that we will get value. Please, let, let's, if you are going to be a member of the council, I mean, at least you are sent a member of the council, glory be to God. Then, uh, how will NIB have our government be able to infringe on your support and that? Mm. The council member, that's what I think who know me know that uh, I always believe that it's not easy to be a human being. <laughs> it's not easy to be a human being. You know, for you to be a real human being, you must, like even people say, not just be a child. You must have to do everything. And one thing I, I want to tell you about our president, you know, uh, Dr. Kenega. Uh, this is a, a man that I have learned so much from. You will not believe how many online meetings we have held. You don't need to travel to Abuja. We will always have your meetings online. I mean, the last time I was in Abuja, coincidentally, I went there for church first stuff. And it happened that that time was also the time we were inaugurated into the council properly by the Minister of Information. And um, there we held our own meetings too. We were able to do so many things. I had so many committees in the council and I still do my job. But the beauty is that technology has made it so simple for us, you know, to, to interact with others, to move on. We have set up so many uh, things that are working like the, uh, the youth, you know, the uh, and NIPR professional hub, you know, for the youth. We have set that up. That's what my my um, committee and the Mr. President, of course, is running with those kind of things. So, yes, I'll still be an active member because I mean, I love NIPR, and it's something that I still think that uh, our government in Anambra State uh, needs uh, the NIPR. You know, not just for image making, but also for find of some of rebranding and the institute in a very proper way. How we can actually move our state to somewhere that is unbelievable, and then that girl will be there. I mean, our chair is here already. Is here. I'm sure that she can develop so many things that we can work with the government to actually get to where we want to get to. And if the things that is happening at the those things that are happening at the, at the national level, at the NIT national level, if, if we are to follow what we are doing at the national level and, and to escape that to our state, you can't beat what you have, what is going to happen. We are, we are having a, 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 a spokesperson, you know, uh, in Nigeria. I mean, when we finish that inauguration, the uh, President uh, Dr. Kinega uh, had a meeting or uh, had a, a kind of dinner in his house for all NIPR members that have one or two positions in Nigeria. It's amazing. Go to CBN, go to all people of NIPR, everywhere, go to the custom, go to uh, Voice of uh, Nigeria, go to Noah, go to, I mean, people everywhere. Yeah, and these are people who are drawing both their intellect and their experiences to actually lift Nigeria you know, higher. And such a similar thing can happen in the number state if we push for what is happening in the natural, na natural and bring it down to a number of states. I mean, the sky will only be our certain point. And let me say that, of course, you know, excitedly that um, uh, it, it's been approved that. Uh, the canalization that we've been talking about, yes. about uh, Nigeria's soil publication, I know it's, it's, it's something that has happened within this short tenor that we have been here. I mean, kudos to Dr. Ike our president, for his doggedness, for the way he made that happen. And what it means that we are going to have, you know, um, information on the Yes, you know, the, the, the right cadre for NIPR members. And of course, Parker is now a bit of a past. So all those people, they are managing all these information officers and all those people, they must become members of the NIPR. Yeah. Uh, sanctions. So what it means that, I mean, we finally arrived. That is, we finally arrived, thanks to our president, Dr. Yeah. Thank you. I want to thank uh, Professor and the rest of the lecturer. Sure. He's the lecturer. Mm -hmm. It's good to, to be with you okay. and have this conversation. I was mentioned to my government that benefited a lot.
by associating closely with NIPR. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes about NIPR, when we talk about NIPR, people don't see in terms of tangible, mm -hmm. but it works magic mm -hmm. when it comes to mind management yeah. and how people, how people behave, mm -hmm. attitude and the rest of it. Yeah. So thank you very much.